There was once a king who had one son. At the same time, there was an emperor who had one daughter. The son of the king and the daughter of the emperor happened to be pupils of the same teacher. They met, fell in love, and agreed to marry. The king's son took a ring and placed it on the girl's hand, and so they were married. After this, however, the emperor sent for his daughter and took her home. The king also sent for his son and brought him home. Then suitors were proposed for the emperor's daughter, but she refused every match because of the bond she had made with the king's son. The king's son missed her terribly, and the emperor's daughter, too, was always sad. One day, the king's son walked near a hall of mirrors, and in the mirrors he saw the emperor's daughter. He was so happy that he fainted. She came to him and revived him. She told him she had refused every match because of the bond between them. He said to her, What is to be done? Your father does not wish us to marry. She said that even so, she would remain his forever. Then they decided to go away across the sea together. They hired a ship and set sail. After drifting around the sea for some time, they came to a shore, left the ship, and got lost in a forest. As if this were not bad enough, soon they became separated. The emperor's daughter found her way back to the shore alone, and there she waited a long time. One day, a king passed by in a ship. Seeing her sitting on the shore, he decided he wanted to marry her. After he agreed not to touch her till they were lawfully married, she consented to go with him to his country. Upon their arrival there, he gave her three ladies-in-waiting, daughters of high-ranking ministers. Every day they would come to her to pass the time together. One day the emperor's daughter invited them to enjoy the fresh sea air on the king's ship. When they arrived, she offered them good wine to drink. She gave them a bite of a bit to drink. Soon they became intoxicated and fell down asleep. The Emperor's daughter then untied the ship, spread the sails, and made her escape with the three ladies on board. When the ladies awoke, the ship already was very far from their country. They had no idea how to find their way back. However, they did not despair. The poor women used the time to pour out their hearts to each other and to take stock of their lives. Do you know mortification? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Do you know the suffering of love? Yes, yes, yes. yes. No, I know. Do you know mortification? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Know. Do you know enduring wrong? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Do you know murder? Yes, yes, yes. 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 And do you know, know. this place? <laughs> It's nothing I've done. I've not done anything. I'm innocent. Whoa. You do not understand me either. Never then. This burden I must keep. I knew that forever. Merciful God. Whoa. Night or day, the burden remains with me, for I really bear it. If only there could be persons, or perhaps even a God, who would wholly understand it, then I too would be relieved. If God was a lady like me, if God was a lady like me, if God was a lady, if God was a lady, if God was a lady like me, if God was a lady like me, just how would I wish her to be? Perhaps a Greek goddess displaying her bodice, a vision of beauty for all to see. A saint with grief growing faint, her son hanging up in a tree. If God was a lady like me, just how would I wish her to be? 
just like my mama. Your chicken soup, mama. No smashing for milk it, or heart soul for me. And God was a lady like me. Just how would I wish her to be? A grandma with whiskers, two hats, maybe three, and a big book telling me what to be. Alas, none of these my fancy does please. Still my soul longs, my God is for thee. I'm left at the loss, existentially tossed, like a salad adrift in the sea. Like, like, a, like a salad adrift, adrift in the sea. sea. The left at the loss, existentially tossed, like a salad adrift in the sea. In the sea. Yes, God is a lady like thee. Yes, God is a lady like thee. And if you would know it, the Torah can show it. See the Zohar, Book 2, Section 50b. See the Zohar, Book 2, Section 50b. And if you would know it, the Torah can show it. See the Zohar, Book 2, Section 50b. ship cut out, they place a new cardboard cut out, the picture of a large black pot. Next, they blow hard into the flames under the pot. Lady one, we burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and pour her libations, as we used to do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Lady two, for then we had plenty, we were all well, and we saw no evil. Lady three, but since we ceased burning incense to the Queen of Heaven and pouring her libations, we have wanted everything, we have been consumed by sword and famine. Rachel, repeated with even greater conviction and identification. In the beginning, I created this God is the supernal mother who rides and rises with a triumphal shout. Oh, another wave of phonetic dancing, shouting, scream, and yodeling, this time even more intense. By now, the ladies and Rachel are fully custom and ready for their new roles. They all stand upstage appropriately framed in some kind of lighting effect aura. The guardians begin to dance slowly and meditatively, gradually moving from upstage, downstage, towards the apron. Rachel, the goddess, meanwhile has remained upstage center. A pit spot illuminates Menachem seated downstage right in a simple chair. He is, for the first time in the show, wearing the traditional all-white Yom Kippur costume of Orthodox Jews. He's looking directly at the audience. 
calmly, meditatively, immersed in profound thoughts, slowly, softly, and with great gravity he begins to speak while the women continue their slow motion dance. We must concentrate with a complete concentration on two things, as a result of which we will be beloved above and well liked below, and a thread of charm will be drawn over us on this day, and we will be accepted into the sacred hall of the Shekhinah. Till now, during the first half of the night, as we were falling asleep, we have concentrated on raising up our souls into the mystery of the supernal lady and into the mystery of the female waters in order to approach the supernal mother, the great lady of the ocean. Now, however, now that midnight has arrived, we no longer need to cause the female waters to arise. Therefore, at this moment, we must concentrate a second time, this time on participating in the anguish of Rachel. For now she descends down below into the world of physical creation. Thus, at this moment, we should weep for half an hour or more before the anguish of Rachel and her banishment and her exile and about the destruction of the temple. And it is especially proper to concentrate on this. Since we sinned, it is we who have cast the souls into the husks, into the unclean physical world, and it is we who have forced Rachel, who is the Shekhinah, the holy princess of God, to come down into exile among the husks to gather our souls and bring them back to the Holy One, blessed be He. Because of our many sins, she has been forced to descend into exile and thus we caused her all this. And especially he who is the root of Cain, in whom there is much of that filth of the serpent into which the souls are sunk, especially he does well to cry and wail much, for he has a greater share in that treacherous act of causing the exile than do the other roots. So from this moment on, until the light of morning, let us occupy ourselves with Torah, and we should concentrate on bringing gratification and elevation to the Shekhinah, to Rachel, who stands outside. And we should bring about a restoration through Torah, so that she may be complete by the time dawn breaks, and be able and ready to ascend together with the ascent of the morning prayer, to unite with God, her husband, through the power of which we added to her during the night. Then will we be called groomsmen of the princess if we have concentrated on this unfailingly. For then we will have participated in her anguish and done all in our powers to restore the Shekhinah of God. At the apron, the ladies speak in responsive reading style directly to the audience. They stand to the two sides and direct the attention of the audience upstage center towards Rachel. Menachem, meanwhile, exits for his rapid costume change to Captain Ahab. We serve the goddess. We are the gatekeepers, standing in our appointed places, angry and warlike, strong, harsh, fearful, terrific, taller than mountains and sharper than peaks. Our bows are strung and stand before us. Our swords are sharpened and in our hands. Lightnings flow and issue forth from the bowls of our eyes, and bowls of fire from our nostrils, and torches of fiery coals from our mouths. In the presence of the goddess, in the inmost glory of the inmost chambers, we set up our posts. The splendor of the Shekhinah feeds the ministering angels. Her radiance, however, is so great that the angels must cover their faces with their wings so as not to see her. If the sun, which is only one of a thousand myriad servants of God, shines all over the world, how much more so the Shekhinah of God. The ministering angels are removed from the goddess by myriads of parasons, and the body of the goddess measures millions of miles. In the presence of the goddess, in the inmost glory of the inmost chambers, we set up our posts.